Hello, my name is Helen Bethel and I'm a registered genetic counsellor for both the NHS and also for Haemochromatosis UK. And this is a webinar about the genetics of haemochromatosis, specifically the types of karyotypes that you can get. So haemochromatosis can have various different causes. It can be caused by environmental factors like obesity and alcohol intake, and it can also be caused by genetic factors. Now haemochromatosis is um, common, and so therefore there are common genetic factors which cause it. There are also some rarer genetic factors, but in this particular presentation, we're going to consider the common genetic factors. So hemochromatosis is referred to as an, autosome, as an autosomal recessive condition. And we're gonna think about this a little bit more on the next slide. So the autosomal part of this, of the name, means that it doesn't matter whether you're male or female in terms of whether you actually inherit the condition. The recessive part refers to the fact that you need two copies of a genetic variant in order to be at risk of developing symptoms. So we have two copies of every gene because we inherit one from our mother and one from our father. And in the example given on the slide, the man shown has got two copies of the homochromatosis gene and has inherited a single variant indicated by the star in just one copy of his gene. This means that he has a normal copy of the gene compensating and therefore he is highly unlikely to develop symptoms and he is what we refer to as a carrier or a heterozygote. The man on the slide to the right is shown again as having two genes of the HFE um, hemochromatosis gene, but this time he has a genetic variant, a genetic spelling mistake, indicated by the star again, in both copies of his gene, which means that this man hasn't now got a normal copy to compensate, and therefore this gentleman is at risk of developing high iron symptoms when he's at an adult. These, this is referred to as a homozygote whereas those who have just one copy who are a carrier are referred to as a heterozygote because they have different, meaning hetero, homo, and same, this person has got the same copy of the gene. So hemochromatosis, the most common version, is caused by variants in the HFE gene or the high iron gene. And there are two very common variants which are present in the white Caucasian population. These include C282Y and H63D. C282Y is a full-blown mutation which can dramatically reduce the amount of working protein present, whilst H63D is a more mild variant which might just slightly reduce the amount of working protein. So let's consider C282Y first. So C282Y, as I say, is a, a variant which does cause a reduction in the a dramatic reduction in the amount of protein at present. So this man shown on the slide has inherited just one C282Y and therefore will have a, a, maybe a slightly reduced amount of protein. But because he's got another copy which is compensating and is producing the right amount of protein, this man shouldn't ever develop symptoms. Occasionally, sometimes patients who are carriers can develop symptoms, but that's where you might want to think about other causes of the hemochromatosis which might be contributing. When a person has one copy of C282Y, they're known as a C282Y heterozygote or carrier. When a patient inherits two copies of the C282Y, so you can see here on the slide that both copies of the gene have got that variant in the C282Y, they're referred to again as a homozygote because they've got two copies of the same gene. And again, this will mean because this person now doesn't have a functioning copy of the gene, this patient is at a high risk of, a, of um, iron loading when they're an adult. Let's think now about H63D. So H63D is a milder variant. So imagine that the man on the slide as shown has inherited a H63D single variant. This again would mean that this patient was a carrier for the H63D. This is a milder version, and he also has a full working copy of the gene. So, so therefore, with this man, you wouldn't expect this man to develop to be at risk of any symptoms. It is possible that this man may have inherited two copies of the H63D gene, in which case he would be called a homozygote for the H63D. In this um, scenario, this gentleman would have two slightly faulty genes, but should still have sufficient protein in order to maintain their iron levels. 
So you wouldn't anticipate that people who are H63, H63D homozygotes, you wouldn't expect them to iron overload. However, if you do have high, high iron and you have been found to be a H63D homozygote, then you may wish to ask for a referral to secondary care, to a hospital, just to check what the cause of that high iron may be. If you have normal iron, then further um, iron monitoring isn't recommended. Let's think now about if this patient was to have inherited H63D, one copy of the variant, and one copy of the C2A2I variant. Well, this will be referred to as a compound heterozygote because they have different copies of the gene, but they have two copies of the variant. Now, in this scenario, most patients do not iron overload because the H63D copy, although slightly um, faulty, um, is still sufficient to produce enough of the protein that this patient shouldn't iron overload. So only about 5% of people who are compound heterozygotes develop symptoms. But it is recommended because you have these two variants, it might be worthwhile every three years having your iron checked via your GP. So that summarizes the different types of karyotypes you can get with hemochromatosis. I hope you found it helpful. If you would like more information about the actual inheritance of hemochromatosis, this can be found in my separate webinar, The Genetics of Hemochromatosis. Thanks for listening.